literally two Americas. One America is overflowing with the milk of prosperity and the honey of opportunity. But tragically, there is another America. This other America has a daily ugliness about it that constantly transforms the buoyancy of hope into the fatigue of despair. And as we look at this other America, we see it as an arena of blasted hopes and shattered dreams. And we should be bothered that at the same moment we are the wealthiest nation in the world, we're the poorest nation in the world. If someone doesn't have bread to eat or something to nourish the body, that's poverty. If someone does not have a decent education, that's poverty. Or if they get an education and they don't have a decent job, that's poverty. Or if they get a decent job and don't get decent wages, a living wage, that's poverty. We ought to be bothered by the fact that the gaps between the rich and the poor are greater and we know that God made this world sufficient for all of us. We ought to be bothered when we have 62 million Americans, 54% of African Americans working at less than a living wage. And we are locking people up for fighting for 15 while corporate crooks are going free. One of the biggest current drivers of poverty right now is low wages. 68% of the children living in poverty live in families where there are working parents, 68%. 82% of children living in families with incomes below twice the poverty line are living in families with working parents. One of the biggest stumbling blocks for adults in poverty is access to health care. For me, the expansion of health care is a pro-life issue. Eight million poor working people are not having health care today because of governors and legislators all over the country denying Medicaid expansion. 30,000 people are dying every year, not because it was their time to die, but because a governor or a legislature would not give them health care. God respects the poor. God exalts the poor. God cares for the poor. God feeds the poor. God remembers the poor. God helps the poor. This evening stands as a moment among moments that coalesce to create this revival, a revolution to reclaim the most basic values of our collective faiths and beliefs and of the great democracy of the United States of America. That democracy, those values have been hijacked by the politics of fear, hate, and greed. We are here to replace the prophetic vision that has been offered by those idolaters and to bring back our government of the people. We are here to replace hate with justice, mercy, and humility, to restore our government for the people. We are here to replace fear with the values of hope and love, reclaiming our government by the people. Moral dissenters must stand up again today, not just in our sanctuaries of safety, but we must carry the sanctuary into the public square. Build up, pluck down if you have to. Somebody must stand and say it doesn't matter what party is in power? Who has the political supermajority? There are some things that transcend political majorities and mere majority politics and the narrow categories of liberal versus conservative. There are some things that must be challenged because they are wrong, they are extreme, and they are immoral. This nation is in bad shape. You're going to have to learn to encourage America to live up to the better angel of her nature.